Jack Tanna's Into the Wild. It's brought to you by Nationwide Insurance and the Columbus Zoo. Partners in conservation for over 30 years. Hi everybody, I'm Jack Hanna, coming to you from my home base, the Columbus Zoo. Welcome to End of the Wild. Southern Africa is known for its amazing wildlife, and there's no better place to spot it than in Botswana's Chobe National Park. All of it lives here, but check it out next as we head End of the Wild. In Southern Africa, the country of Botswana is one of the most sparsely populated countries in the world. But don't worry, the lack of people is more than made up for by the massive wildlife populations. In fact, Botswana's Chobe National Park is famous for having the largest population of African elephants in the world. At over 7,000 square miles, the park had plenty to explore, and my wife Sue and I couldn't wait to get started. Well, it looks like, looks like the Everglades. Yeah, this is always my favorite when I see the elephants in the water. This is really, really special, Jack. Look at that. Yeah. One thing that Sue and I both love are elephants. You can sit and watch elephants every day for, I don't know, a month. I, I never get tired of elephants. I've never seen this before. Sitting there having fun drinking, all of a sudden the rain comes, they just leave like Sue said. They pack their trunks up and said, let's go. That's something that we're here for the first rains of the season. I've never, yeah. I've never done that before. Ali was a wealth of information about the animals in Chobe. But a park like this also needs a vet to look after the animals. Next up, we paid a visit to veterinarian Dr. Clay Wilson. You're the veterinarian for this whole place. I'm the veterinarian for uh, Chubby National Park, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. That's a big park. It's a big park, yeah. And a big job. It's a big job, yeah, absolutely. You basically know where the animals are going to go to every night, every morning, even during the daytime. Uh, and that is to water. Without water, these animals don't live. Do you do a lot of your work from the water as well as land? Sometimes I do from the water, but most is from the land, yeah. This time of year, though, you probably see so much more from the water, don't you? Well, everything's coming to water now. Yeah. This is the only place in, in, uh, in the entire area where we've got water, so all the animals have to come and drink every day. Huh. We weren't out there very long in this boat, and all of a sudden, I saw something I thought for sure was a huge log, but it wasn't. This was one of the biggest crocodiles I've ever seen. Wow. Yeah, it's a big boy. And that's definitely a 12-footer, 13-footer. So what are we going to do? Just go up the shore where it is? Oh, my gosh. Coming up. You think we should have the boat going up that way? No, we're good, Jack. Oh! It's OK. Next on Jack Hanna's Into the Wild. Hey. Chobe National Park in Botswana is packed with wildlife. And today we're exploring the park with veterinarian Clay Wilson. We've just pulled our boat up next to a 12-foot crocodile to get a closer look. His eyes are wide open. Golly. You think we should have the boat going up that way? No, we're good, Jack. OK. So he kept getting closer and closer and closer. OK, guy, that's good. Now one looking at me. Perfect. And it's funny because after a while, you see this crocodile, and they're just lying down, and you get a little bit comfortable. Not that you should, but you relax a little bit. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Thanks, sure. guys. He's not worried in the least, huh? All of a sudden, this thing shoots off like a rocket. Oh! Okay. This thing was coming right for that boat. I don't know how this crocodile missed jumping in our boat. If that crocodile got in that boat, somebody would have been wiped out. With everyone still intact, we decided to head back out on the Chobe River to see what else we could find. Okay, this is what we call Sedutu Plain, and what happens is these buffalo will come out here and uh, try to get away from the lions. But last year we had uh, a pride of lions just laying on the on, on the, the island here. They swim across. Oh yeah. I didn't think lions liked water. Uh, it didn't bother them at all. You know, at night when they hunt, uh, th these buffalo just they can't get away. They're on an island. One of the most amazing sights of this trip was seeing a Cape buffalo just come out into the water and walk right in front of this crocodile in the water. Be interesting to see what he does. And I guess maybe the Cape buffalo was too big for the crocodile, and the Cape buffalo must have sensed that. Well, you're pretty, pretty close to him, don't you? I get right up to them. Holy oh, darn. But I'll tell you what, if it had been a small Cape buffalo, oh. It could have been dinner. We got a big pot of hippos here on our left. What's happened right now is because it's overcast, they're coming out during the daytime. 
Boy, I'm telling you, though, you have a ton of hippos. Look at this. There's, there's thousands just, of hippos. Yeah. Looks like just a cow. And again, they look so docile. You would not know that they will turn on you in a heartbeat, OK? Yeah, you Especially wouldn't. the bulls. Now, they're out now because it's not sunny, right? It's, it's, it's overcast, and it's not affecting their skin. So as you can see, the uh, the little pink solution, too, on their, on, their, on their skin, it helps them from sunburn, right? Yeah, it's their natural suntan lotion. Where? The one in the middle here. Okay, now that's the secretion. Oh, what are you doing? Is it? That's not just their no, skin. That's, that's the secretion. secretion. What was the other one? Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. Further up the river, we found a huge herd of elephants. This is the place. We've got half the population of elephants in the world here. Jeez, I mean, look at this. They're surrounding us. 180,000. What they're doing is they're they're getting the roots with their, their feet. He's got it in his trunk. Now he's got his grass in his trunk. There goes the sand off, and then he'll eat it. I'm just going to watch these elephants. Let me look at this. We're in 360, yeah. so you got to enjoy this. Oh, yeah. Elephants there, elephants there, elephants there, and elephants there. Look at the they're tiny, all, tiny They're elephants in 360. All the way they're, they're all coming down to, to, to drink. Look at, the, look at the bitty ones now. All the way around this. Look at his tiny little trunk. They don't know how to use it yet, you see. It takes them two years before they can figure it out. Hey, look at it. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so cute to see this baby just playing around and his trunk going everywhere and they don't know quite how to use it yet. So they're they're just learning. It's an adventure form. He, he, he doesn't quite know what to do yet. He's pretty good though, look. What an experience this was. Something else. Oh, yeah. Another awesome day in Chobe National Park. But tonight, we decided to stay on the river itself in a beautiful ship called the Zambezi Queen. At the end of the day, when you're out and sweaty and hot and tired, I mean, you've had an incredible day, but you come back and you see all of this luxury. I'll tell you what, it was a nice treat. After a good night's sleep on the Zambezi Queen, we awoke to some disturbing news. Yeah, we just had heard by our shortwave radio that Dr. Wilson had to go assist with an elephant that was stuck in a watering hole in the mud. Around watering holes, there's a lot of mud. If an elephant is like six months and older, the mother can't get it out. And so we immediately stopped what we were doing and, and went to see how we could help him. This elephant, I guess, was injured by hyenas. There's quite a few. We've seen some carcasses of some elephants that are dead, but we'll have to go up there and see what's happening. What happened to the elephant? Uh, the elephant was stuck in the mud. We tried to come last night, and the, the female was here chasing us. Oh, I see. So we couldn't do anything in the evening because they, they, they will attack you. All right. It got attacked by hyenas through the night. Oh. So. Is it still alive? It's still alive. It doesn't look good. Yeah, he's not in good oh, condition. Oh, Jack. Yeah, we knew walking up there, at least I knew when I, when I saw it, just laying there just like it was gone, I knew that this wasn't going to be good. And I must say, pursuing that was one of the most emotional sights we've seen in the animal world in our entire, not just filming career, but our entire career of, of raising animals. Blood pressure is very low, huh? No, it's very sad. But unfortunately, I see this daily. He's still breathing, that's what it is. Yeah, I know. We're going to put him down. There's no way this animal can survive. Uh, the trunk, the trauma, the no eye, uh, the damage already to the animal was was beyond, uh, knowing what I know about elephants and animals, the damage was beyond repair. You know? All right, huh? Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Sorry, Sue. Sorry. I'm sorry, baby. Yeah. So sad. Yeah, it is very sad. I hate this. Yeah, so do I. I hate it because it's still breathing. Yeah. Well, That's why I hate it. So you can't do nothing about it. No, no. I this, know. The, the, the trauma <laughs> is just too severe, okay? And it's, it's too much in shock. There's a drug called M99, some other drugs they use. I don't know what all they are, but but I knew that once he did it, that it would be very painless, you know, for the animal to go. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. Sorry, little guy. I was hoping that I could bring it some kind of comfort just by holding its its trunk and letting the little elephant know that somebody was there that loved him and cared.
later that day, Sue and I had had the opportunity to to, to go with him. He had, he had signs all over this this kind of town village, whatever, saying there would be a dog vaccination in his parking lot at a certain amount in the afternoon there. Clay, yes sir. You got a good turnout today. Well, we're just starting. We're just starting. And you do this uh, once a month, or? No, we do this once a year. And it's all free? Or? This is all free. Well, who, who pays for it? I do. No, you don't. Yeah. Once a year, Dr. Wilson puts on this free clinic to give the local dogs rabies and distemper vaccinations. Keeping these pets disease-free is crucial to them and the wildlife within Chobe. Perfect. Good job. It was a happy scene to see they were getting vaccinated. I didn't expect that many people there, so I was shocked at that. But then again, I was even more shocked because everybody that was with us in our group had to help. Everybody had to help. Everybody had to help hold. Everybody had to help the dogs down. You had to help uh, do the medicine. Something's wrong. Is that good? Let me see. What happened? You okay? Coming up, for a while there was total chaos. Oh! Uh oh, wait, 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 wait! Next, on Jack Hanna's Into the Wild. We're in Botswana at Chobe National Park helping vaccinate local dogs. One of our patients has gotten his leash stuck under a parked car. Um, yep. There you go. He's got it. He's got it. Okay. It's okay, buddy. For a while, there was total chaos with dogs that had the improper collars, with dogs that were stuck under vehicles, with dogs that running across the road almost getting hit by cars. Oh! Uh oh, wait, 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 wait! God bless. But in the end, despite a few close calls, all the dogs were vaccinated, and we knew the wildlife at Chobe National Park would be better off as well. Well, these animals owe you a great deal of thanks. Thank you. I'll see you Thank later. You. We'll see you guys later. I know one thing I will never forget as well as Sue. We go on a lot of safaris in the last 30 years, but I must just say that, that I'll never forget that few days in Chobe from the standpoint of on the river, in the boat, the sunsets, the amount of wildlife we saw. Uh, obviously the tragedy we were involved with as well, helping with the dogs. I mean, all that was just something that was very special. Yeah, we definitely did see the, the circle of life, but you know what? At the end of the day, we never could have had a better safari.